Thank you very much. A wonderful beginning to the rest of the program. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Dr. Nardov, and I'm happy to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Aaron, Dr. Jabali Ade. Thanks to those of you also who are on YouTube. Dr. Jabali Ade is a very special person. He's a popular professor at Temple University, one of the leaders of the Maleficati Asante Institute, a scholar who is busy writing to explain the fundamental nature of our popular and historical culture. He holds two master's degrees and is working on his second doctoral degree right now. He's a busy, clear-headed, devoted father as well as known as the rapping professor. He works on Afrocentric futurism, religious myths and ideals, especially in the Americas. He is loved by his students as a caring, observant and communicative professor. Dr. Ade remains highly regarded at Temple University, and I'm very proud to know him. He's one of my colleagues there. Our next program, this is for you to remember on YouTube too, that our next program is going to be in January 22nd when our president, Dr. Maleficati Asante, will speak on what is necessary to educate African people. So without further ado, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing Dr. Jabali Ade. Hotep. How y'all doing? I guess I should be saying, ah, because I was thinking to myself about the correspondence dinner when Obama had sent the special troops to assassinate Osama bin Laden, and he spent the whole night dressed up, smiling and shaking hands. And I remember thinking to myself, that's a high level of strategy, because if I knew I had just sent out a hit that was going to change the history of the world, I wouldn't be able to compose myself and be so cordial and hospitable throughout the evening. So I said, you got to get your Obama on, brother. <laughs> ah. So how's everybody doing this evening? <laughs> real good, right? I'm doing real good, too. Just like Obama. I'm going to sing and talk and do my work and best believe behind the scenes work is being done. I'll leave that at that. Oftentimes, I think to myself, um, What's the difference between a lot of the people who are very deep but not very productive and those that move in silence and get a lot done? And the temptation, the impulsive temptation, is to say everything you think and feel and respond according to your feelings. You know, you get betrayed and you want to lash out. You don't get recognized and you want to speak up. But oftentimes, the overall goal for the collective could better be served with a higher level of strategy and patience and maturity. And for those of you who've heard me on the radio, I hope you see my growth. <laughs> because, ooh, it would have been a show today. But then it might have been my last show. So, <laughs> so now I learned, you know, you wanted to hit a show must go on. So, you know, I, I'm going I'm to go to my PowerPoint because, you know, those off-the-cuff comments nowadays can, can do a lot. But, yes, we are definitely at war, and we have to be vigilant. And I think that we should be unapologetic about warfare. I've never seen a soldier apologizing, especially while on the battlefield. Because people will try to take you out of your, your posture. And if the moment calls for a military posture, people might want to soften you. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. No, no, I think it was Rakim, the rapper, said, ain't nothing funny. He's a stick-up kid, said, still nothing move but the money. 
So sometimes it's time to play. But I've always had a problem with, with playing, and people say, you should run for office. I say, no, I shouldn't. I'm going to get up there and tell the truth. I'll be, I'll be gone. <laughs> Literally, I'll be gone, gone, right? Y'all know me. I, I'm going to say it, and they're going to be like, well, you can't do that. You're a politician. I say, well, you shouldn't have picked me as a politician. I'm a truth teller, and I'm fiercely loyal. And I, I don't think it's any confusion. I don't know if I can get any water. That I am... Um, a long time ago made it plainly known that my devotion, uh, like, like our Hajj Malik al-Shabazz, when he came out of prison and um, he was talking about he, how he adored the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Adorare, right? Um, anything that works against that which you are loyal to, if you are this kind of Soldier on the battlefield, you know. Anybody see Devil in a Blue Dress? Don Cheeto's character. And they was mad because Don Cheeto came in shooting. He said, if you ain't want nobody to get shot, you shouldn't have called me. You know when I come, you know what I'm going to do. So I dedicate this presentation to a family member of mine. His name is Philip Smith from the Throsneck Projects. He fought in Korea, and he was a supreme captain in the Black Liberation Army. That's probably the first time I said that on tape. And like my grandfather, for those that didn't know, um, over there on CCB Moore, he, he shot a few people over there. You know, he's trying to break in the store. We have a different way of engaging, you know, in my family. So I said, I know when I go out into the world, you got to play games with people. Because I know in North Philly, you know, I've seen people you know, for less, right? Like $5, the wrong look. You know, not saying thank you when somebody holds the door open in New York recently, right? Like, so I know the, the stakes. So when I watch people, you know, in political spheres, in academia, I'm like, really? Is that what we doing? Because you know if this was on Broad Street, you wouldn't act like that. You know if this was 10 o'clock at night and you saw me walking down the street, you would never speak to me like that. You wouldn't even try to play with me. You'd probably cross the street. But oh no, they play both sides now. They, they, they spread rumors now. They, I said, really? I said, is, is academia a metaverse where you never have to leave and go back out into the real world? Don't you know you got to leave this building and make it to your car? I said, okay, I guess we got to play. So I watch him. I watch him play. I said, yeah, this is the same hand that fed you. I know the hand because it's mine. And I think to myself, I would never. I would never. And I say, that's what makes you different. That's why I like hearing you speak. Because when other people speak, they say, who's in power? Who's, who, who, who's in vogue? Uh, uh, who, what should I say? Uh, who, who should I align with? Uh, who, who can get me an advantage? But there's always those certain people, right? Win, lose, or draw, I'm with you. If everybody goes over there and Dr. Asante's over here, I'm with you. If the whole world tries to cancel you, if the money goes, if the friends go, if the relationships break down, if everybody lies on you, if everybody tries to turn against you, you need some people in your corner that's going to say, I'm going to slay all of them. And even if you have gone, I'll dedicate the rest of my life to destroying every enemy that ever stood against your legacy. You need people like that. I think it was Scarface. He said, you need people like me. So you point your fingers. Huh? Say, that's the bad guy. So I want them to know. I want them to know who's coming. Every time you go against my teacher, I want you to know that it is noted. And I will return it tenfold, like Garvey said. Tens of millions, like in the whirlwind. So I'm plotting. I'm taking notes. I'm taking names. And I guarantee you, the day will come that everything that is ever done against this man and his legacy will be repaid one way or another. And the best thing that could ever happen to these enemies of Dr. Asante is that I remain in academia because if I am not confined by the restraints of the academy, God help them. So my first slide. I don't know who they think they're playing with. I wasn't always a professor. All right. And I'm like, I would not play. I don't play with people. 
I think it was Dave Chappelle said, taking a man's livelihood is akin to killing him. You play with somebody's job, you're playing with their kids. You're playing with their life. I'm talking about you say one thing that's untrue about somebody. They said some nasty lie about teachers refusing to teach students. That's like a mom saying your dad don't want to see you when she's hiding you from the father. Then going to turn around and try to call you a deadbeat when they done skipped town twice. I know there's some men in here that can relate. <coughs> we not playing no games out here. And I don't know why they're trying to get me started, but one way or another, it's going to end very badly for anybody who thinks that this is a game. We dedicate our lives to this. We know we're on FBI watch list. We know we're going to get harassed. We know we have less chance to get a job. We're not worried about what you could take from us. We're not worried about what you could do to us. Malcolm said, I live like a man that was dead already 20 years ago. There is no, I, uh, Tupac said, I have absolutely no fear. I have no fear. I'm not looking for one friend. I'm not looking for one dollar. I'm not looking for any approval from anybody ever. All I want to do is make sure that I live and die according to my principles. And my principles say they think it's sweet and they think that we're going to keep playing with them. And they better choose a side and be on the right one when the time comes. Because they ain't got nobody on their side like me. I promise you that. I promise you that. They don't have one person on their side willing to sacrifice, give up, and do what I'll be prepared to do. So they need to stop playing. They need to watch what they say. They need to watch who they hang around and watch what they do. Because it will not be forgiven and it is not going to be forgotten. So where do we go from here? I like to say racism is a, not a zero-sum game. Ra race is not a zero-sum game. Racism is. I'm going to see if I can get through this. Zero-sum game is a tug-of-war. You know, what is in race? Recently, you know, um, there was some criticism about Dr. Dove and Dr. Asante's book, uh, Being Human Being. And I always remember the Dogon where it said in their society, you know, murder was almost non-existent and, you know, rape was non-existent, suicide was non-existent, right? So this idea of, of the potential for humanity from an African perspective had transcended, you know, what every other civilization seemed to have been able to do thereafter. So I said, we need to return to what Dr. Milana Karenga calls the best of what it means to be African, and who knows the rest, the best of what it means to be human. Thought that was always the plan, right? But you know as well as I do, if you want to have a fight with somebody, some of y'all in relationships that are toxic, you've been in one, you can find a reason to start a fight, right? I remember that movie Chris Rock, While I Get Married, he was trying to go cheat, so he tried to get mad because she was cooking chicken. That was all, that's all he had. She had cooked dinner for me. Yo, chicken again? I can't do chicken. He ran out the house, right, to go cheat. Now, you, 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 you can find a reason to go cheat, right? So I, first I said to myself, I tried to approach it logically. I said, wait, they mad at people for trying to be human beings? Yes, humanism is human. You mad at people for trying? I, I, Melody Crane said, but I thought we are the first human beings. We we're the first man, the first woman. We're the first, wait, 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 now we mad at the human being? I said, oh, I had to catch myself. I said, this is about chicken. <laughs> Almost got me. You know, because if you, if you don't catch it, you might go in there and season the chicken three more times. Right, right. I don't know. I should have did the jerk chicken tonight. You know, I know he's from the islands. No, 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 no. You missed it. You should have put a tracker on his car instead of went and seasoned that chicken. <laughs> you done fell for it. So there was a moment in that, in that, in that debate, that dispute, that critique, where I had went for it. And I, I, I applied my academic rigor and my intellectual wherewithal. And I was like, man, I can't fit. I said, man, please. When you on top and you getting attention and you got a building and they don't even got a banner, people want what you got. I think it was Meek Mill said there's a level of success where the people near you start to not to like you. And you got to understand that's what comes with a certain level of success. They feel like they're entitled to everything you have. Simply by the Virtue of proximity. And I heard today somebody talking about, they were talking to the president um, today, and they were saying, some people can't handle the altitude. The Jay-Z line says the pressure's on, but guess who ain't going to crack? <laughs> Pardon me, I had to laugh at that. Some people can't handle, you know, being up there. 
And I know that the Dr. Asante more than most, you know, can consort with, with potentates and, and leaders and kings and queens and still keep his common touch, you know, and speak to everybody and have the level of humility and open communication and regard people's full humanity regardless of their station in life. And in the Maxims of Patahotep, it teaches you how to engage with a great man. Basically says, do what they, do, do what they say. Stay out their way. Don't occupy all their time. They got, they got great things to do, you know. You don't ask a great man to do a bunch of laundry and all this other stuff, and, you know, they, he's great. He's going to hire me if you can figure it out, right? So, so when I go to his office, I usually say, hey, doc, you know, one foot still out the door office, right? And then I wait for him to tell me to come in, because sometimes he says, you know, hey, you doing? And that means, you know, move walk back out, right? <laughs> doing good, see you when I see you. Now, now, when he says, hey, man, come on in, right? So I say, okay, if it's cool with you, I'll come in, right? So then I say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, what you need, right? Boom. And after that, I get out. But I know other people, they want to tell their whole life story and sit down for an hour and a half. And I'm like, you know he don't got an hour and a half for you. <laughs> Not because you're you, just because he's him. He's trying to serve thousands of people. You can't have a full therapy session with a man who has another thousand people to see after you. But just like some people can't handle the, the position of greatness, some people don't know how to engage greatness. And there's certain communities that drain their greatness. They don't know how to protect their greatness. That's why when certain communities have scandals, you don't see them offer their people up. Ain't nobody say nothing about what needs to happen to Brett Favre. Let me take a break. You ain't heard one think piece, one YouTube video, one campaign, one hashtag. You ain't heard no list of demands for Brett Favre taking millions of dollars of welfare, literally food out of babies' mouths which could have caused them to die. You ain't heard one person say, we need to mute him like R. Kelly, offer him up like this one, do this or that. You ain't never heard none of these communities say, destroy that which is ours. If it's going to be done, we're going to be doing it. It's our business on our time. Mind your business, get back. What do we do? I agree because I don't think that was right. And uh, there's a whole lot that ain't right. Like you talking. <laughs> and two wrongs don't make a right. Don't act like no, nobody got family members that, that, that are on the other side of the law. You don't walk down to the precinct. This ain't right, George Jefferson. This ain't right. You ain't right either. <laughs> you end up raising somebody kids. All that snitching you're doing, <laughs> you're going to look for the next of kin. It's going to be you, <laughs> right? You're going to say, this ain't right. <laughs> now I got to raise all their kids. Yeah, you want to tell not everybody. You know? just saying everything that's on your mind and just because it's true don't mean it need to be said. And other communities understand this. They say, what is the overall benefit, the cost analysis, the risk and the benefits? You know, they, they, they do an assessment. And they say, okay, we got some bad people in our group. How do we handle it? You know, we say, we got bad people in our group. White man, <laughs> come handle all of us. And they come in like gangbusters, so happy. And we think that the, that the, the treatment's going to be consi consistent, right? Who, who's R. Kelly's cellmate? Is it Matt Lauer? Is it, is it? I can name a bunch of them, but ain't no need to. Right? I, I, can, I can name you 50 white pedophiles, you know. I'll take it back historical to Buddy Holly with the 14-year-old child bride he had or Elvis when he married his, what, what was she, 15, 14? You know, I mean, that's how we, we could do this all day. But we thought after R. Kelly, they was going to get some more. And they was like, nah, we done. They went from R. Kelly to the ghost of Michael Jackson. <laughs> they said they went from black men to dead black men. And we ain't catch it because if they say another headline tomorrow, we're going to be demonizing somebody else. So you need some people that are going to say, even if they write, I ain't giving it to them. Go ahead and talk about who's involved in the slave trade. See if somebody give it to you. They read the books. They know. Talk about birthrights. Talk about original inhabitants uh, of El Morocco uh, in America. Uh, they ain't giving it to you. They will not give it to you. They will say, but. They'll, they'll take every book you got, every quote, every citation. They'll sit and listen to you. And after you finish, they're going to say, but we're all here now. And they're going to hit that butt so fast. They be waiting for it, like double dutch. As soon as you finish, as soon as you finish with all these facts, I'm coming in with the rationale. I'm a lawyer for my ancestors instinctively. I ain't even never meet them, but I know my role, and I'm on code. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to jump on, on, on nothing. No, 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 no. Peep it, though. Just look how people moving out here. 
to bring it full circle, if somebody creates a department and you in a department, I know there's some parents out there that have looked at a child in your house talking reckless to you and you're staring at the back of their head trying not to catch a case. And you're thinking, what in the world would, would, would deceive somebody so significantly that they would think to be under a roof that they didn't pay for, in a house they didn't build, and talk against the very hands and mind that created this must be crazy. This niggas must be crazy. And if it was if it was gone today, they couldn't replicate it themselves. The people that ran outside and bust windows for Louis Vuitton belts wouldn't know the first thing about putting one brick on another or putting a window pane inside of, putting a window inside a pane. Oh yeah, I'm talking about I'm, I'm talking about the, the 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 people who said I'm protesting by stealing. If you gave it to them tomorrow, if you say, you know what, all the white people got on a, a spaceship like that, you know, movie back in the '60s where the black people were trying to take all black people off the planet. Some of y'all follow me, and they was like, uh, all the white people are gone, y'all. It's all over. Y'all got it. I think we'd have the hardest job as conscious black people we ever had in our lives. I'm talking about they don't know how to how water supplies work. They don't know how electricity works. They don't know how transformers work, how fiber optics work. They don't know any masonry or anything about cement. They don't know how to fill potholes. They don't know how to start cars. They don't know anything. And instead of getting the skills, you're too busy demonizing Booker T. Instead of getting the skills that could put you in a position to create your own or take over that which you wage a revolution on, you're just an agent of destruction and deception and dissent. All you could do is critique. And we got too many of them in our space. They can't do nothing but talk bad about somebody else. They can write a 50 page article, but can't have one sound relationship. Be on a fifth marriage, acting like they black, not black, all kind of nonsense. Don't get along with nobody. Nasty as the day is long but want to critique, oh, oh, but, but this guy that been doing it for 50 years, I just think he should do it a different way. You got people that can't even write a dissertation or talk about somebody who's been, write, who been, who been uh, passing more PhDs than every other department put together. This, this, is, this is real. This really happens in life. Like you talk about Monday morning quarterback, you know, a guy that couldn't throw a ball if his life depended on it. He'd be like, yeah, you see, you see what, what Brady should have done. What you should have done is ease up on the pork rinds and, and the Thunderbird 50 years ago, man. You, 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 ain't, like, you ain't in a position to talk about no, the world-class athletes. But there's something about this new generation with the social media where everybody's entitled to their opinion and it has some value and it really don't. If you can't build nothing, shut up when people building. Can you imagine somebody coming in the kitchen talking about something, this don't, this don't smell right, and they can't cook? You say it don't smell right to you because you ain't eating none. Have a nice evening. Don't put your spoon up in my pot and tell me what I'm doing. And you know you can't cook. Can't even make tuna fish. That's what we're dealing with. If you said the office is open, anybody who wants to run it, like January 6th, if the White House said anybody, any of y'all complainers and critics who want to come run the country, come on in, we lose the country in, two, in 24 hours. They ain't got no, no geopolitical strategy. They couldn't identify our countries on a map. They don't know who our allies are and who we're in conflict with. They don't know where we get our cobalt, our coltan, our oil, our gold. Our, they don't know none of this. They don't know what underground bunkers and cities are, nuclear testing sites. They don't know how the doomsday plane is ready to fly in the case of nuclear engagement. They don't know nothing. But they're so mad at this politician. And, so, and I'm saying some people are worthy of critique, but if you're going to be mad at somebody, when I was mad at the teacher, you know what I did? I became the teacher. I'm going to say it again. The teacher was lying on African history like they do all the time to all of us. I didn't walk out the side door. I didn't curse them out. I said, oh, I'm going to take your job. Here I is. But I'm, I'm saying that, but that, that, that gives sustenance to your critique. If you're going to have something to say, make sure in the back of your mind you got something to do. The second you point that finger, right? 
The second you that that beam is in your eye, you're not paying no attention to, right? The second you're looking at somebody else's flaws and imperfections, make sure you got a nice big mirror at home. Because if I'm talking about somebody else, you, you best believe I'm doing a whole lot of work personally. You know what I'm saying? There's some things I got to get out of my space and out of my life and out of my mind and, and certain connections and certain interactions that ain't benefiting me. And I'm watering plants that have that, been dead for years. And I got to make sure I'm doing me before I come out here and start talking like this. But I see people talking and I'm like, you know darn well. 50 of y'all together couldn't do what Dr. Asante's done in a year. 50 of y'all ain't write one book. He's passed 100. At what point do people say maybe I should hold my peace and become something that makes me worthy of my critique and my opinion in a space that I could fit in and belong and not just look like a hater and a spectator. I don't know any other people that does this. I can't do it. I don't got the first inkling of how, what, how it works, but I'm going to talk and talk and talk and destroy the people doing it. This is madness. This is, I'm talking about the critique. If you ever came to me and said to me, I want to talk to you about Dr. Asante, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. I'm going to save you some time. I'm going to say, tell him. And you're going to say, no, I just want to talk. And I'm going to say, why you want to tell me? Because all I'm going to do is tell him. And if you would talk about him without him being present, it's letting me know you would talk about me when I'm not around. And I don't play like that, right? So even the, the gossip you entertain, if somebody's talking about somebody and they not in the room, you should exit the room. Don't be back and forth having some long drawn out meeting. About, Can we get them in here? Cause somebody call them on the phone. Ain't they part of our group? Ain't they part of our movement? Ain't they part of our family? Who has a family meeting about family and you dogging and tearing down family and nobody calls the family members? What kind of evil demons are y'all? What the hell's wrong with people like that? I just think we should talk about them for an hour and a half. And shut your damn mouth or get them in here. Even the Bible says that, right? You got a problem with somebody, you get some people around, you get the person there, you talk to them in front of somebody. If it don't work out, then you get a, a, a witness, right? You get your brother, they, I, I wanna, I wanna, I'm trying to build, I'm trying to rectify, I'm trying to make sense of something, I, I'm trying to reconcile. But if you're comfortable with the person not being present to even hear your critiques or defend themselves, then what is your goal? What spirit are you operating from? Dissension, deception, hatred, divisiveness, envy, and jealousy. Just my personal opinion. Oh, they're going to love this video. So I say racism is like a game of Jenga. I think that we can do a whole lot of altering without completely compromising the entire structure. I went to the Museum of the American Revolution. And I was like, oh gosh, why am I going here? It was WRD that had the event. And I had to look at all this George Washington stuff. But what I was pleased about was that they had a far more diverse outlook on history than any of us probably had growing up. And that was very encouraging. I always say we don't have enough appreciation for incremental growth. It's not gonna happen overnight. All the problems ain't gonna get solved. The curriculum ain't gonna be pro-black Afrocentric tomorrow in these schools. Probably never will be, we got that. But we need to see the needle moving, right? Bending toward justice and all that good stuff. So when I saw these uh, exhibits of African Americans fighting, you know, on various sides of these, you know, conflicts for various reasons, because oftentimes people do create a, a narrow perception of the, the black experience during that time. And some people were like, oh, London's going to give me freedom. I'm going to London. See y'all. And people couldn't, you know, fathom that. They thought everybody was on the same plantation at the same time and the bat single went up and they all just followed Abraham Lincoln or something. And it's like, no, that's not the way it works. People were doing things that made sense to them, their regions, their station in life, their opportunities for freedom, right? And, and, and seeing that, even within the, the indigenous Native American communities, I was like, I just appreciate the fact that they're acknowledging that different people view the same historical events from different perspectives, and they have different stakes in the outcomes. So what could be a victory to you could be a tragedy for me. 
It could end my way of life. It could be a new world and new beginning for you. Just that acknowledgement was an exponential leap forward, similar to the MoMA in New York when they said the African origins of civilization, the exhibit they just ran you know, last season. And Dr. Santi made the point, that's the first time they ever recognized that. It's the first time they ever combined their early civilization with the African civilization. Like before that, you know, it was John Henry Clark with the great debate, Mary Lefkowitz, and we were still fighting that. That was a big fight, we kept fighting it. Yosef and Yakanat, everybody fighting it, fighting it. But okay, so people put in work, they move the needle, now the conversation is more rooted in truth. We don't have to fight that fight, but now our fight seems to be a little different. And one thing I, I like about the nation is they have suspensions. You're familiar with Malcolm's story after the Kennedy assassination, right? I, I always say the Afrocentric community can do very well by having a little more um, structure. I'm all with decentralization when it comes to economics and things like that and blockchain technology and cryptocurrency and not having the Federal Reserve be in control of our money not based on a gold standard since 71 with Nixon and you know having the access to stop people's accounts like they did Russia and Kanye West. I, I'm all for that kind of decentralization. But when it comes to a, a movement, sometimes you need to strike the way terror cells strike. But the overall structure of an organization has to have some pillars, a, a code of conduct. That's a better way to say it. We need a code of conduct. So when people are acting outside the code of conduct, it'll be culturally natural to shift away and interrogate, exile, or to challenge, or like I said, bring the person in the room like, like so things don't spin out of control. Because I've seen so many times in this movement, whether it's Garvey and Du Bois or Malcolm and Martin, uh, I, I've seen so many times where it's like, how did egos even get into this? let alone get in the, the way of the, the progress of millions of people to the point where people's lives are lost and they're destroyed. Malcolm, Elijah, we can keep going all day. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. But some organizations, like, you know, there's court-martialing and AWOL in, in the military from our military people. Like, like, you know, there's some things you can't do. And if you're going to do them, you're not going to do them here. We don't have that. And I think that might be a great suggestion for the future. We catch you biting people's back out and trying to destroy people. You're not in this no more. Because there's enough people you could have came to, and you could have came to that person. And if you ain't got a record of all these attempts and approaches and conversations and all this in private, you got to go. Because they already trying to learn too much about us. We all got tracking devices in our pockets. They listening to every conversation, whether on YouTube or not. We, they, they already too in it. We don't need to go public every time there's a conflict. So anytime you see somebody, that claims to be Afrocentric, that goes to the white press before they go to their black brother or sister, you're dealing with a traitorous, demonic spirit that is hell-bent on egotistical destruction and the elevation of self and not the progression of a people. You know darn well they don't, they don't have your best interests at heart. Why would you ever? A press release? You sound pressed. You sound butt hurt and jealous. You sound evil and backwards. And you sound like you are no student of history. They called Dr. King the most notorious Negro agitator. They murdered a minister and tried to validate and explain it and blame it on him. That press, the press that called the Black Panther Party for self-defense the, the greatest threat to national security, that press. That's the press you want to release stuff to? That's the press we need to release you to. So in the days of silencing, we got to pick a side, right? We know we got to be more strategic nowadays. In the days of buck breaking, just, 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 just pray for the brother. Because I know people who have committed murder. There's people still playing in the NFL who have been accused of rape more than 10 times. They suiting up and everything. Meanwhile, Kaepernick's still waiting. I, must, I, I, well, I won't show y'all. I'll tell y'all. If y'all remember, during the lockouts and when the games weren't being played, there's an article, you could look it up, you could type in Kyrie Irving, 1.5 million support. Kyrie Irving donated 1.5 million for other players who made less than him so that they could have money during a time where, you know, it was sparse. Can you imagine how it would feel if I done dropped a million point something for y'all Negroes? And then when they come for me, y'all hush up like somebody just paid you for a lap dance and you too busy to talk till the song is over. 
some six foot nine grown men that can't get on the same devices they be on every day for no reason, breaking up happy homes and everything else that these basketball players be known to do. But now you, but you can't do it to defend your brother. You can't go live to defend your brother that done dropped 1.5 million. You know the one that was that, the one that was so bad because he didn't take that vaccine because they promised him that it prevented you know the, the 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 transmission of the virus. But now they're saying it didn't. But they're not saying sorry to Kyrie. Y'all know that, right? He was public enemy number one for not taking the shot. Stephen A. Smith and everybody, they called him so stupid. He's, he's, so, he, he's not a team player. He's such a terrible person. And, you know, because that's going to stop transmission of the disease. And then it came out that it don't stop transmission, and everybody got quiet. You got to be careful helping people, because if you ever help people thinking you're going to get something back, that's when you end up losing it. That's why you got to help for the right reasons. Because if you help them thinking they're going to help you, you ain't study Malcolm. You ain't study Martin. You ain't studied Marcus Garvey. You ain't studied Bob Marley. You ain't studied. On Dr. King holiday, I guarantee you, Bernice King ain't getting no cash apps. We're going to give to the Urban League. We're going to go paint lockers. We're going to let these candidates come visit our block once every two years and get the photo op. We're going to do all this free labor that Dr. King did not want us to do. Poor people's campaign, right? Tran uh, you know, sanitation workers in Memphis, crushed by the truck and everything else, not getting they just do. The last thing Dr. King would want is for us to work for free in honor of him. We're going to go out there and re-enslave ourselves while making other people look good and have PRs. All the while, his family ain't getting a dime from none of us because we ain't got no structure, no code of conduct. We don't know how to move. But go to one of these churches y'all hate and watch how they treat a bishop. They leave, they start their own church, they come back, and when they have the, the celebration for the pastor, they line up and they give all kind of gifts to the pastor. These thugs that y'all don't like. We do a crime together, I get caught, y'all don't. I don't say nothing, you hold my portion, you hold my family down. When I touch down, you take me shopping, you hit me with a bag, and we back in business. Code of conduct. We got each other. So the church could do it, the drug dealers could do it, but somehow the people that call themselves conscious ain't conscious of how to support one another. I don't know the number to call tonight if I get locked up walking out this building. If I was in a gang, I probably would. If I was in a cult, I would. I don't know who to call. Because everybody doing videos and everybody doing books, but ain't nobody giving no structure. I can't be like, uh, uh, CO. I got 50 lectures. Can I go home? <laughs> I downloaded 50 lectures, audio books and everything. You know, cash only, bro. Cash only. So all that, all that critique of capitalism you was doing, it ain't going to get you out. You better be able to critique it enough to make sure it doesn't destroy your life. Because when they say you need money to get out th this cage, I hope your critiques can free you. And you can't call nobody asking for money when you've been critiquing capitalism. All you. That's an awkward phone call, right? Uh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, I know, Mr. Marxist, what you need? This is going to sound crazy, but uh, I need some money. <laughs> oh, no, 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 nobody don't need no money. No, so, no, 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 just, just socialism. Just, just ask for a favor. Just, you know. <laughs> ask them to be nice to you. Tell them you'll get them right back, you know. You know, ain't that what you was preaching the whole, the whole time? You said, you know, we should do away with this, this capitalistic society. And he'll say, you in luck, because in jail, nobody got no money. <laughs> it's all so, nah, nah, you got money on your books, you got money on your books. Okay, let me wrap this up, and I'm going to talk to y'all. I'm just going to show you what I would have showed y'all and talked about. We're in need of an update. People are coming back outside trying to act like they were acting before we went in. They've been planning for two years to make sure everything that was happening right before we went inside never happens again. Y'all remember the uprising, the greatest national, international organization, and people in Australia and Iraq was yelling Black Lives Matter. They ain't gonna, they, 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 they watch that. They, 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 they got specialists that crunch numbers in real time. Just like the, the, the Kerner Commission, you know, why did this happen? How do we prevent it from happening again after the riots? You think they didn't do that this time? You think they didn't ask how did this happen? How did we get here? Did we kill a few too many on camera? You know, should we, should we did less media coverage? Like, you know, there's focus groups, there's PhDs, there's social scientists. They, 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 you're not, you ain't gonna pick up your sign and go back out. They passing laws that they can run y'all over now. Remember that, DeSantis and them saying you run over the protesters? So, so they, they, already, they already upgraded. 
We back trying to, let's, let's start it back up. Meanwhile, the girl from Black Lives Matter bought a third mansion. Okay, let me not. Let me, okay, too, too honest. Too honest. Too honest. Too honest. What you doing out here? I've already, I've already been honest about mine. So. I ain't buying nobody no male mansions. No, no, no. So we need um, to recognize we're experiencing a paradigm shift, and we need new methods of resistance and new waves of resistance. So we need to understand that. And when I say new waves, I talk to people that are like 12 and under often. I don't know what y'all think the plan is for them. I don't know what y'all want them to do or read. I don't know what y'all want them to have their time being occupied by. But unless you're talking about TikTok, you're probably not right. Because that's where they at. And you know who's not there? Take a guess. The professional lecturer, book writer, critiques. You, there's so much new age stuff on there. If you just hum at this frequency for 10 minutes, you'll lose 15 pounds. Yeah, you don't look at me like I'm stupid. They stupid, because they be watching it. <laughs> Play this sound 10 times a day, and you'll be a millionaire. Some nasty noise pops up on the screen like a fire alarm. This is on TikTok. Am I lying somebody be on TikTok? It'd be it's still stupid noises, little beeps and stuff. And I'm like, why ain't they getting shake out to Joe? Why ain't they get? I say, because we too busy trying to trying to one up each other. We too busy trying to be the, the blackity blackitest consciousness Negroes. The head unconscious Negro not in charge of nothing. And you would think that with all this critique and with all these professionals, we'd have more than one institute in the city. A lot of abandoned buildings in Philly, y'all. I was here with some of y'all when they was doing the dollar program. Remember that? All they do is promise to fix it up. They'd be like, please take it. How many got taken? A dollar. Who, hands, if you remember that, a dollar. So all you needed was a dollar to have your own. You ain't had to talk about nobody. Go do your own institute. You got a dollar? Go ahead. No, I'd rather sit in the back and wait till question and answer at the institute. Now I'm, I'm got something to say. If you don't take your raggedy behind, you belong in an abandoned building. You don't belong in nowhere that's nice with that kind of mentality. If you can't own something and it only costs a dollar, but you can make it to Chick-fil-A twice a week, and to the bar, let me stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, the conscious community does not consume alcohol. Or yeah, right. Okay, um. I was taught that people have money for what they feel is important. And if you're in a relationship, remember that. <laughs> if people want to spend on it, they find the money. Y'all remember they said they had no money for student debt, no money for reparations. COVID hit, the stock market had a, a fall, and they found trillions, y'all. They said more money has been, 80% of the money that's in existence was printed after 2020. 80% of the money that's ever been created, you could just type it into Google, 80% of the money, 2020, it'll show it. 80% of the money in circulation, American dollars, were printed after 2020. If you think there's not gonna be any answer back for that along the future, if you think we're not headed for no type of recession, depression, total crash, if you think that the topic of conversation should be what another Negro is doing, you already showed you are completely unconscious. That's like a Mack truck with its brakes broke, sliding down the street, Tokyo drifting on Broad Street, and I'm saying to you, why are you wearing those? You should wear the 11 Jordans. You got, what the hell is wrong with you? What kind of conversation are you having at this moment? I just don't like it, because I heard that, that 80 years ago he said something slightly different. Didn't do boys? Didn't Garvey? Didn't Booker T? Stop calling people gorillas and all that. And we talk about, right? People grow up. And there's something about in the hip hop community, it's the same way. These artists come out and they're violent and they're negative and they're criminal. And then they start reading books and people don't want to buy their music no more. You was criminal minded. I liked your KRS, but now you're talking all this teacher stuff. You know, in the beginning, Nas, you, 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 you was going to hell for snuffing Jesus, you know, live at the barbecue. But now you Nostradamus, you're talking all this philosophical, prophetic. I don't, I don't like you no more. Oh, Jay-Z talking about paintings and, and generational wealth. I, I can't get with him no more. You don't see a pattern here. 
you really think it's just the music? You think they're really just out of touch? Or you think you just want to stay in the same place you want people to stay down there with you? It's something about that frequency, that demonic negative base frequency, that they don't want any growth whatsoever. They don't want you to think about growing. You ever be around somebody that can't dream, and you start dreaming and it pisses them off? All right. In closing, this could be the last slide, really. Um, dramatic reduction in the promotion of detail. It was good. This is where we started. We need a dramatic reduction in the promotion of details of our private lives and thoughts for the purpose of public consumption. Everything that happens in your life is not public record. It's not for public consumption. People taking pictures of every plate, every relationship, every address they visit, that is not the way to build yourself up spiritually. Your energy, something happens to your, you remember the indigenous people used to not want people to take their pictures? They had an issue with cameras. They said it took a piece of your spirit, right? You don't want to always just be giving and be interacting with something that's not a genuine, right? And it takes you away from really engaging in life in real time. People are taking pictures of themselves, taking walks. That means it's taken away from what the walk is supposed to do to some extent because you're interacting with technology more than you're interacting with nature. And it's not even getting to the spiritual level. What spirit are you interacting with in your phone? as opposed to what created the nature you're supposed to be enjoying and interacting with and gaining you know, energy and exchanging energy with, right? So you have a whole populace right now that the frequency is so thoroughly demoted that you have to be very careful to protect and conserve and restrict your interaction with said energy to the extent that you can engage it without losing control or any material injury to yourself or any physical danger to your livelihood or life because they are out here on the lowest level possible and they dress just like us and they writing just like us and they, they walking around claiming that they black even when they not, but they are out there. And it's like the purge, it's like night of the living dead, the night of the living unconscious conscious people. And it, it's time to have a real serious spirit of discernment and privacy and going internal is definitely one of the major answers. Question and answer? I'll just show you while y'all do the Q&A. I'll just show you what I was going to say. But yes. Uh, there's a lot of elders here. And I was just um, want to ask you, what do you think would be the best things that we could tell our youth, um, this young generation, that TikTok, our teenagers, um, in the midst of all of the killing we're having amongst each other. How can we rise again, arise and shine from the elders? This is gonna sound interesting, but you know, I love my AAR peeps. But I'll speak from the position of those that live on, on my block. I don't want you to tell me anything, but I would love to do something with you. I know for a fact, if there's a basketball game that's organized, one of the things the young people said that they wanted when they, when they surveyed a lot of young people, they said they wanted boundaries and structure. They were surprised, you know, you think they want something else. No, they want structure, they want boundaries, they want wisdom. But I don't want you to be, pre I, don't pre I don't want you preaching to me. I'm already, I'm, you know, I'm getting that all day. I got my IEP in school, and I mean, they, they put me in special ed, although I'm I know I'm normal. And like, all this stuff is going on, you know. I, I look just like my father. Like, everybody's always talking to me. So you, out of love, come to talk to me, and I'm like, and you get surprised by the response. But I'm getting that all day. What I'm not getting is sincere interest in my life and my dreams and my goals. What I'm not getting is somebody that could take me from where I am to where I want to be. I'm not getting consistency in terms of engagement in my life. I'm getting people that'll just finger wag me and disappear forever, whether a family member, a teacher, or a police officer. So consistency is a big deal. Somebody said, hey, we just want to let you know, anytime y'all interested, we out here once a week, and we got pizza. Panther showed us the basics. I know I'd stop by to get me some free pizza. You got me for 15 minutes. You might not give me for the full hour. I might not even play basketball, but I'm going to come get that pizza. And every time I come get that pizza, you know, you can say, uh, what's it, uh, Jabali, right? Yeah, 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 what school you go to? Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, y'all good, y'all good, definitely, yeah. I don't know if y'all wanna play ball, you know, it's all good. Come on, man. Most people don't reject love when they see it sincere and consistent. And I think that's what we're not doing. We're not getting together saying, what could we create for them? Because last night, I promise you, in the city of Philadelphia, 
a young person with no money in their pocket had nowhere to go. Back in the day, we did midnight basketball for a little while, right? There's, we, tell, we say what we want them to do. Name the place that they could have just walked in. The library wasn't open. The gym wasn't open. Their school was not open at 1 in the morning when they needed something to do. Then we get mad about what they do at 1 and 2 in the morning. There's no adults out there with them. Ain't nothing stopping us from going outside. If a 14-year-old can go outside, so can a 45-year-old. We just tired from work and we got other things to do. Ain't nothing stopping us from going out there and taking our communities back, taking our kids back. People are acting out to get attention. When they run in a store where they know the cameras are instead of staying somewhere the cameras aren't, you got to think. They, you know, there's news like, oh, they ran into Wawa and they snatched stuff. Why? Some of y'all worked in schools before. If I see a little a girl throw a chair, I say, what happened this morning at home? How have things been at home? I'm not going to think you just came at 8, 10 and wanted to fight everybody because something happened within nine minutes. You're not a sociopath. You've been carrying that for a while. That was the last draw. You know what I mean? So when you see people run into a store and grab stuff knowing everybody's going to see them and they'll probably make the news, then you got to ask yourself, well, what, what, that, that's, that's hurt. That's neglect. That's somebody that wants to be seen. And they, they have no skills or communication ability to, to let people know, I, I, di I never got love. I feel rejected. I don't know how to love myself. I have dreams, but I don't know how to achieve them. Nobody seems to care about me. People tell me I'm stupid. All this other stuff, that's, that no, nobody's going to say that when they're 15. They're going to curse. They're going to, I don't know, be loose. They're going to be violent. They're going to do all kinds of other things. But we as adults, we have to be able to read the language of troubled youth. And we can see that they're troubled. And when you're troubled, you need guidance, you need love, you need consistent support. You need somebody to understand and not act like they was never there themselves, where they were confused about where they were going in life. We have one more question here. Let's go ahead and ask questions. What happens if you have to come over after high school? So I don't think we officially had the round of applause for a spirited uh, presentation by Jabali Day, so please let's give a round of applause. That's good. When, when you get so hyped that people don't clap, you know you, you know you're talking. Sometimes in class, I say something so true, the students be like this. I say, I know the silence doesn't mean you don't, you're not with me. Dr. Smith. Yes, sir. God bless you. I think we would be, we, we need to do is start telling our young people the truth about being black in America and what they're going to face. I don't care if they have this and can speak six languages and the mother was born in Germany. I don't care about this. You're black. When them people, the cops stop you, when people see you're black, they don't do the background or nothing, you're still black. And I think until we start telling the truth about our history, what we were going through with, I'm an ex-Marine, former Marine. They beat me to death in the Marine Corps because they said, we don't want you in here. They didn't beat around the bushes saying, oh, we're so glad to have you. They beat me. So we got this, call it like it is. And if we tell them what they're up against, they won't leave home in the morning thinking they better than the guy down the street that dropped out of school. Amen. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for that, Reverend Chow. And uh, about this, um, the current controversy with the, the whole birthright situation, you know, and, uh, the peace to the Moors watching, because I'm sure they're like, they're not talking about nationality. It is very important for people to understand the law. This is for a reason that people are upset about these issues. Like when you see what your enemy doesn't want you to discuss, you need to go ahead and do some research. If ain't nobody mad about the books you write, then maybe your books ain't as hard hitting as you thought just because they helped to get you tenure. This man made that movie in his, in his house for $8,000. Did y'all know that? He used stock images, free ones you can use, that you can get online for places he couldn't afford to travel to. He used, uh, what do they call it, uh, fair, fair use music that you can get download offline for free. The movie, the, Ky the movie Kyrie put on a, the man, he, he $8,000 did all the editing and production, but he used music that was free online, images that was free online, did his own research, created the book and a movie. Right now Amazon got the movie at what, $11 to rent it? So he's doing fairly well for 8000 But you got to think to yourself, what is it about a platform that could show children being murdered? If you just type in horror in Amazon Prime, you could watch people 
there's stabbing, strangulation, rape, murder, people being exploded, burned, run over, shot, right? You can see all that. No women's group could get any of those movies taken off. No anti-violence group. PETA can't get any of the movies taken off. They talk about skin and animals and everything else. Nobody has any power to do anything with any of this, these, this demonic nonsense. But this movie got everybody talking. And I said, I've seen hateful movies. I watched the History Channel. They did a whole day on Hitler. And I was like, are y'all trying to, you know, talk down about the man or recruit? <laughs> the History Channel had Hitler on, all, you know, they did World War I, World War II. They did Hitler all day. And I was like, this is hateful. They're playing the speeches. They got subtitles, right? So we even just to study race and racism, we have to watch racist stuff. I have to understand the Klan to talk about it in class. So just because I download the movie don't mean I'm joining the Klan. So there's a real uh, three-card Monty switcheroo thing that happened where it's like you can't even engage material without the assumption by virtue of loose association viewing that you adhere to the philosophy of that which you've observed. You can't have a critical perspective of one piece of information and a supportive promotional you know, attachment to the same, that, that can't be the case. I can't love when Garvey said this, but not when he said that. Some of y'all love the Africa for the Africans part, but don't like the Christianity. I'll sip my water on that. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. Oh, uh, do you think black on black crime is a myth? Not a myth, but a political strategy to pathologize and demonize African people to make them seem as though they are more violent than other groups of people when people commit acts of violence based on proximity and opportunity in correlation to, you know, jobs and things like that in terms of crime. It's not, it's not, it's not the melanin. And I think that black on black crime tries to draw a fictitious connection between the abundance of melanin in a person's skin to their propensity for violence. And I think that we do ourselves a favor to, to get rid of that, just as people want us to get rid of saying black in general so that we can you know, finally have a national status, which I don't know would be the worst thing because we were willing to change our names a million times so far. So let's not act like as a people if we was, you know, we were the colored and all these other things, Negro and African, African American. So if somebody said under the color of law, you need a flag and a language and a landmass to bring certain grievances as an international a body or demographic, and if they said the way Malcolm wanted to go to the UN, you can't go to the UN as black because there is no black land, right? That you can't go to the, you can't go and, and say as a nation we're entitled to take back our lands because you're not identifying with any nation that ever owned land. You're identifying with a color. So even as a mode of strategy, like when Donald Sterling, owner of the Clippers, changed his name from Donald Tokowitz to Donald Sterling, he was still Jewish, but he said if this could help me, here I go. And black people need to understand how strategy works. It's just the overall benefit, not the personal, impulsive, egotistical, prideful benefit in the moment. And parents know about this, because sometimes they'll sacrifice big parts of their lives you know, for the next generation. Whole dreams get put on hold, because like I got four kids. I love dancing. I got four kids. <laughs> it ain't going to be like, mom will be back. Broadway is calling. Like, <laughs> Yes, anybody else? We good. No problem. Um, we definitely want to thank everyone for coming out. This is the uh, our ending of the season. Uh, the season will start again next year. Uh, I just want to thank, first of all, thank our uh, presenter uh, for such a passionate uh, presentation. We'd like to thank everybody that's online for watching. Please pay attention to the website. Go to the website to find out what our schedule is for 2023. And on behalf of MK Institute, we just want to thank you guys for always tuning in, and we look forward to the next presentation. Hotep.